So hello, everyone. I have a, a question before we start. Who has been here for more than one hour sitting here? Please raise your hands. Congratulations, guys. You won 100 points for the best survivors. You're still awake. That's great. My name is Riccardo Zacconi. I'm the CEO and founder of King.com. And we do great games. And we like to compensate people who actually achieve results. So let me give you a view, a quick overview of what we do. But before I start presenting the company, I think it's important to understand the strategy, to understand the games industry. Who has an iPad here? Please raise your hands. Please now keep your hands up if you play games on the iPad. OK, actually, the audience is not so bad. The real statistic is the following. You will not be able to see it very well. I'm going to read it. So games is the number one app on smartphones, on tablets, and on Facebook, through three key platforms in terms of growth. Uh, on uh, tablets, 67% of time spent on a tablet is spent playing games. On smartphones, 39%. And Facebook has 230 players who play games every month. Now, if you want to understand, actually, games is a very broad world. You have to go down one level to understand the world of games. So what games are played on these devices? This is actually interesting. Nine out of 10 apps, the top nine apps, paid apps of all times on the iPhone were casual games. What is a casual game? A casual game is defined as easy to learn, difficult to master. You learn it in one minute, very easy. Like if you have played Angry Birds, you understand what the game is about. And you can play it over a very short uh, space of time. You don't have to play hours. You can play this game for a snack bite ti uh, time frame. So this is interesting, but actually what is also even more interesting, I don't know, anyone here has invested in Zynga? No one, actually one. Uh, so this is actually what is happening in social. Uh, social 1.0 was about farming games. They are defined in the industry as resource management games. So look at what happened in the industry. In uh, January 2010, our eight out of 10 games were resource management games. The only exception to the rule was poker and Mafia Wars, which are two games which are appealing to a different audience. Casual games are appealing to a female audience, and these games are appealing to a male audience. So let's see what happens a year later. A year later, there's one exception to the rule. The exception is a game called Bejeweled, Bejeweled Blitz, which is the only casual game up there. So what happens a year later in uh, on the 28th of October of this year, if you basically last week, uh, this is a screenshot from the statistics from AppData, public. Six out of the top 10 games actually are casual games. There is a change in industry happening. So we are driving this change. King.com is driving this change. Two of the, top, of the top 10 games up there, in fact, game number four and game number six are our games, and those are both casual. So the interesting thing, is that we started on uh, Facebook only last year. We launched our first game on Facebook in uh, April of last year. Now we are number two in uh, the, the second largest game developer on Facebook. And we are the largest game developer in casual games on Facebook. We have the biggest market share in this, in this segment of games. How have we done that? What's the trick? What's the secret sauce? The secret sauce is, is very simple, actually, to explain. We've launched one hit after the other. If you want to hit proof, so if you ask someone and someone tells you that games is not a hit-driven business, it's a lie. Games is a hit-driven business. This means it's always about, hey, am I able to launch another hit after this hit? That's the big question in any, in any, for any investor and for every person who actually works in this industry. And there are only two possible solutions to doing that, actually to hit-proof a hit-driven business. The first one is what I call the Alitalia strategy. I'm Italian, so I like to use these this comparables. And the second one is just to try and launch a lot of games, and some games work and some others don't. I can tell you that we go for the second one, and we don't go the, for the first one, because the Alitalia strategy means you copy. And this means you are always late in takeoff and late in the arrival. Right? And what is 
Have you tried reading where busy games is part of the entertainment industry? Now the newspaper of yesterday is old. The movie which came out six months ago is less interesting than the movie which came out yesterday. This is games, this is the entertainment industry. So we go for the other way. And the other way is you launch a lot of games and some games work and some others don't work. So, but then how did you manage to actually be successful on, on Facebook with just six games so far? Well, what we do is we fail fast and cheap on the web. So this is our game creation and game launch process. We have a site on the web called king.com, which has been around since 2003, and we've been launched a lot of games there. And some of these games work, some others don't. We launch an average 15 new games per year. When we find a game which works, the hit game, then we spend a lot more time and resources on making out of this game a much deeper game with 200 levels with, and I will show you an example afterwards, and we launch this game first on Facebook and after that on mobile. And we focus on iOS and Android. So I'll show you now an example of what this means. Uh, we, take, we took one of these games to start with. This is a portfolio of more than 150 games in, uh, in 11 languages. This is our test bed. And we have a large portfolio of games which are fantastic. And we took one of these games and we put around this game a framework. We call it social envelope. What does it mean? The game is, is, a, very, is, is a, proven, a proven gameplay. And then you play this game on a landscape. And on this landscape, you progress from step to step by achieving a minimum score. And you see your friends on this landscape. And it's fun because actually it's not stressful. You have time. And it's slightly competitive because you see your friends in front and you want to pass your friends. And the business model is very simple. You have five lives to complete this journey. If you don't achieve a score at one level, you lose a life. And uh, after you lost five lives, you either wait, or you watch a video ad, or you invite your friends, or you buy new lives. And you can continue. So we are addressing with these games the same audience that resource management games address. But we have. Besides the fact that we have a variety of games, it's not just one genre. We have clickers, switchers, puzzle, uh, card games, etc., etc., mahjong, and so on. Besides the variety, and it's also about the cost effectiveness. We have a cost base for launching one of our games and for maintaining it of eight people. So the comparable games, let's say a game like, like Farmville has 200 people. In average, 80 people working on a game with a lot of capex going exactly after the same target group. What we all have also done, we have introduced a process where we don't only have a process on game creation, but we also have a process for game launches. So you saw before the integration with Facebook, with Plataforma. There are some standard elements which are in common across all games. So the integration with Facebook, the landscape, the, the, uh, the model with the five lives, the notifications, etc., etc. We have built all these common features on a platform, not in the game. This has several advantages. Number one, speed. Second advantage is quality, because only 1% of the code needs to be changed for all common features. So the code is the same, so you can't have more quality than that. The third advantage is uh, sharing of knowledge. Usually, knowledge management happens around the coffee machine or the smokers, where they exchange basically what works, what doesn't work. In this case, whatever works actually is standardized, is put into the platform and available immediately to the, next, to the next game. And the last advantage is scalability. We went from 110 people last year before launching on Facebook. We passed 300 people in September. We are going to, uh, we, our target is 400 by the end of the year. We opened up in order to get all this talent. We, get, we need to go where the talent is. This means we opened up other five development offices. Uh, besides our main development offices at the time, which was Stockholm. So how do you grow with quality across so many different offices? Uh, this is the way. We have Plataforma, so we go to the, uh, to the, new, uh, the new studio. We tell them, here is a gameplay. The gameplay is proven. Now develop other 200 levels of this gameplay and integrate on Plataforma. You don't have to rewrite the code. All common features are in there and the learnings are in there. If you find a new feature which is working well, we are, will build it then in Plataforma. 
So what are the strategic priorities for us? The strategic priorities are very simple, and I like simple strategies. The first one is continue growing by launching additional games, proven games from our portfolio, which is continuously enriched on, on Facebook. Secondly, it is to launch the same games on mobile. And thirdly, is geographic expansion. We are mainly uh, today active in, uh, in Europe and in the US. So mobile. We want always to do these things differently and to change the market. At this moment in time, you have some players who are strong on uh, mobile. You have some players who are strong on Facebook. There is no one actually who has won the whole thing. Why? We think because the market is not yet there where it can be. And I think the market will change. And so we think that what is key is to have a seamless experience wherever you play. Because if the game is good, the player who likes to play this game on his computer, on her computer, will most likely like to play this game also on uh, her smartphone or on her iPad. But when you started playing the game on your PC and you go to your phone, at this moment in time, the standard in the industry is that you have to load up the game and you start from the scratch. And if you bought some items, some virtual items on your PC, you have to buy them again from the scratch new. So this is not a positive experience. So what we have done, we have launched our first game in August, and it's a seamless experience. And to this depth, no one has done it before. And it's technically not uh, without complications. Here is an example. So the game was Bubble Witch, Bubble Witch Saga. And you have not only when you download the game, you start immediately from the level where you have left on your PC. So if you've played the first 50 levels, you can immediately, from the moment where you download, start from level 51. Then the game is exactly the same game. And you, it's a real time. It shows you where your friends are in terms of ranking, but also in terms of progression on this landscape. And ultimately, finally, if you have bought some charms, like for example, or some virtual items, like the charm of precision, which shows you where you are aiming at, these charms and these virtual goods will immediately be available there, and you don't have to buy them again. And the experience continues. You, if you continue playing on your mobile, you actually will be able, when you go back to your PC, to continue where you left last on your mobile. And if you bought some items there, they're available also here. So there's another advantage besides the user experience. The other advantage is that we have now 12 million daily active users on Facebook, 50 million monthly active users on Facebook. We can use this user base here, this active user base, to grow and also on mobile. And Facebook is instrumental for that. Because let me play you an ex a, a user experience. I play my game on, on my PC. And in the process, I send a notification to my friends where I invite them also to play the game or where I, I tell them, I just passed you. Now, my friend is not, uh, is not yet playing this game on his mobile or on her mobile. And she gets a notification saying, uh, Paul sent your request in Bubble Witch with a little arrow, which is on the Facebook app on your smartphone. You click on the arrow, the arrow links you, and the application links you directly to the iTunes store, to the App Store, where you can download the game and play the game. And then you play the game, you invite your friends, and from there, the circle closes, because if some friends are playing are on a computer, they will receive the notification there. It's a closed circle. So some practical results. Results we launched in, uh, in uh, August on uh, uh, basically Bubble Witch. We immediately, without spending on marketing and without any Apple feature, we got in the top 10 in all the European countries. Uh, we also did some additional marketing in the US. You have a base traffic. And then on top of the base traffic, you can only invest on Delta marketing. And the, and the app became number one in, uh, in the US the number one game in the US in the App Store, and number three overall. So that's a brief strategy and a brief presentation. Any questions? Thank you so much.